2020 has not been a good year for so many reasons. Fortunately, there have been some monster titles to distract us through these tough times. This video is going to look at the RPGs that we have coming in 2021. This list is going to count down my personal top 10 RPGs and these will no doubt be different to your top 10 so let me know what you're most excited for in the comments below. Most of these games do have set release dates announced but the other ones are still likely to be released before the end of 2021. Each of these games are also entirely new titles so I decided not to include remasters such as Shin Megami Tensei 3 and Nier Replicant which I am by the way completely pumped for. Before we begin, if you liked this, it would help out a lot if you hit like and sub for loads more RPG content. Also, Happy New Year! I hope that you all have an amazing 2021. Alright, let's get into it. Chris Tales is an upcoming independent RPG that has been in the works for a while now. It is stated to be a love letter to classic JRPGs but with a new perspective. It draws inspiration from the classics that we love such as Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VI and Valkyrie Profile. The story revolves around Chris Bell who embarks across the Four Kingdoms in a bid to stop the powerful Time Empress and rewrite the future of the world. Here, there is a big focus on choices and consequences. You have the ability to view the past, act in the present and then watch your choices dynamically change in the future. The interesting thing is that this can all be done on one screen as you play. Yep, that is definitely a new perspective. One thing that I really love about this game is the incredible art style. These hand drawn 2D graphics look amazing. Chris Tales is set for release in early 2021 and is something that I'll definitely be playing. Bravely Default 2 is something that I know a lot of you guys are interested in. This JRPG is the third in the Bravely series and tells a completely unrelated story to Bravely Default 1 and Bravely 2nd. Set in a new world on the continent of Excellent, the game follows four main characters with its story revolving around the four elemental crystals capable of bringing destruction to the planet. Fans of the original two titles will be happy to see that the Brave and Default combat mechanics make a return as well as a focus on jobs and mixing and matching their abilities which is a staple of the series. Bravely Default 2 is set for release on February 26 on the Switch. Next, we have the newest mainline title in the Monster Hunter series, Monster Hunter Rise. If you've played this series before, you'll know what to expect. You play the role of a player-created monster hunter and take on tasks in the village which usually involves slaying some kind of monster. Then it's a matter of using your loot to upgrade your gear so that you can take on even more difficult monsters. Rise will feature some of our favourite monsters from the past as well as a host of brand new ones and the 14 weapon types that were present in Monster Hunter World. The unique feature of Rise will be the focus on vertical movement through this world. To help with this vertical scaling, you'll be given a bunch of new new tools as well as the ability to mount and ride the new dog-like companion Palamute. I've had loads of fun with the Monster Hunter series in the past and I'm sure that Rise will be no different. Monster Hunter Rise isn't too far away either and will be released on the Switch on March 26. Gotham Knights is a little bit different to the action-focused Arkham games that we've seen before. Firstly, Batman is dead, leading to a rising crime throughout the city of Gotham. So, who's going to save the day? You'll be playing the role of his allies, Nightwing, Batgirl, Robin and Red Hood, who each have their own unique playstyle and abilities such as Robin's teleportation techniques. Gotham Knights is also going to have much more emphasis on RPG elements such as displaying damage counters, crafting and giving players more tools to build their characters the way that they wish. One thing that I'm looking forward to is the two player co-op where the second player can jump in and out at any time. A specific release date has not been stated but it's said to be released sometime in 2021 on Xbox consoles, PlayStation consoles and PC. East Nine Monstrum Nox will be the next title released by Nihon Falcom who are quickly becoming one of my favourite RPG developers of all time. Unlike the Trail series, East games are pretty close to being standalone titles. In East Nine, most of the settings, locations and characters except for the protagonist Adol are new so it would be fine to jump straight into this without playing any of the other titles. The game begins with Adol being thrown into prison after being falsely accused as a suspect involved in the disappearance of a military fleet. During the course of the game, he gets gets caught up in an incident involving this prison city and the Monstrum who are being set to possess unique supernatural powers. As you would expect, the action combat returns and without a doubt we'll be in for another dose of Felcom ear candy. East 9 is scheduled for a February 22 release on the PlayStation 4 with the Switch and PC versions being released later in the year. 
I spent much of my childhood casting spells and watching Harry Potter and that's partly why this franchise's newest title, Hogwarts Legacy, has me so excited. That and the fact that this game looks awesome. Hogwarts Legacy is an action RPG set in the late 1800s. You play the role of a Hogwarts student able to explore an open world of popular Harry Potter locations including the Forbidden Forest and Hogsmeade. Not too much is known at this point but the game will allow you to brew potions and tame magical beasts as well as having a morality system. We don't have an exact release date yet, but it will be released on Xbox, PlayStation and PC. Tales of Arise was on my list last year, but its 2020 release was unfortunately delayed until 2021 due to the pandemic. Arise takes place in a world divided by the medieval Dana and the technologically advanced Rainer who holds power over Dana. The visuals are clearly a step up from Tales of Berseria, which was released 4 years ago, far too long if you ask me. Bring on Tales of Arise. Before we get into the top 3 titles, here's some upcoming RPGs worthy of an honourable mention that don't quite make the cut for me. Now, it feels like we've just talked about Monster Hunter, probably because we did just talk about Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin is a spin-off and the sequel to the 3DS exclusive which was later released on Android and iOS. This spin-off series changes up the formula from the mainline games which has always been to destroy these giant beasts, upgrade your equipment, then destroy even stronger monsters. This time there is much more of a focus on JRPG elements such as story with the main character able to use a kinship stone to form bonds with these monsters. I can't wait for a chance to ride a Rathalos into battle rather than, you know, being killed by one over and over again. There's also going to be compatibility features between this game and the new mainline title Monster Hunter Rise. Monster Hunter Stories 2 is set for release later in 2021 on the Switch. Next we have Horizon Forbidden West. Yeah, I know this game looks awesome and I know how good the first one probably is, but the fact that I haven't played it is the sole reason that it's not in my top 10. Forbidden West is the sequel to Zero Dawn and continues the story of Aloy who is sent on a quest to the Forbidden West to find the source of a mysterious plague that kills all that it infects. The open world this time will be larger and includes the element of underwater exploration. Yeah, I hate water in video games, but this game looks so good that I could probably forgive it. Forbidden West is set for a late 2021 release on the PS4 and PS5. At number 3 we have Shin Megami Tensei 5. The huge Megami Tensei series is in no shortage of quality JRPGs. I'm looking at you Persona. As you would expect, this latest title is set in Tokyo and will of course feature the ability to fuse with demons. Very little is currently known about this game but producer Kazuyuki Yamai did state the following. There are surely many people frustrated by troubles both at home and abroad such as the anxiety about finding a job and getting old or terrorists and nuclear weapons. I want to make a Shin Megami Tensei game that can sympathise with such an era. SMT5 was first announced 4 years ago so they've been working on it for quite a long time. Hopefully we'll learn more soon and see the Switch release in 2021. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 is yet another game that was on last year's list but delayed until 2021. Bloodlines 2 takes place in Seattle during the Christmas season. The world is one where vampires, werewolves and demons hide in darkness with the vampires following a code to conceal their existence from humans, hence the title The Masquerade. Gameplay wise, this means that players are penalised for using certain vampire abilities in front of witnesses. If your existence as a vampire is exposed, police will be alerted, other vampires will hunt you and eventually humans will choose to avoid the streets entirely. The original game was awesome and I can't wait to see where the sequel would take the series. What's also interesting is that there is yet another RPG being released in 2021 named Vampire the Masquerade Swansong. Here, you take the role of three vampires, each belonging to a different clan. This narrative-driven RPG is set in Boston and allows the player to weave between all three intertwined stories. Swansong also looks really interesting so I'm putting both games as number two. If you're a channel regular, my number one probably won't surprise you at all. Having undertaken the massive task of playing through all 9 Trails titles in the space of a few months, I can safely say that this is one of my top RPG series of all time. Seriously, it's right up there with Sukaden. Every single time I see the trailer and hear the epic music, I just think, whoa, in a way that no other game on this list even comes close to doing. That is why Hajimari no Kiseki is my number one. Hajimari takes place after the events of Cold Steel 4 and focuses on 
three main protagonists. We have Reen from the Cold Steel series, Lloyd from the Crossbell arc, and the Mysterious C. The game's perspective changes between these characters through the cross-story mechanic, which reminds me a lot of the Trinity Sight system of Sukiran 3. Look, if you've played through the entire series, you'll understand why this game and the series in general is so incredible. If not, do yourself a favour and look into it. And there's my top 10 RPGs being released in 2021. Hopefully every one of them will be awesome. What do you think? What RPGs are you most looking forward to? Let me know in the comments. This was Hellfire RPGs. Thanks for watching. If you like this, hit like and be sure to sub for more RPG content. Also, come say hi on Facebook and Twitter. See you next time.